Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today I am doing a side-by-side. -side. I quite like side-by-sides because it gives a true comparison of the two whiskies live without you having to remember what the other one was like. Today I am going to do something that could be quite controversial. Okay, I am going to side-by-side -side the Yamazaki 12-year-old single malt and the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve single malt. A little background. I'm not going to go too much into it because most of you will know what a Yamazaki is, Japanese whiskey. These days when you mention Japanese whiskey, everyone goes on and on about how awesome they are, they're the best and all of that because they won a couple of awards. Now look, in my other review, I've, I've reviewed a, a Japanese whiskey in this channel before, um, I didn't rate it too highly. One, it was too young. Two, it was just lacking complexity, it was rushed. Um, but that was a relatively cheap bottle of whiskey. Um, this is a 12 year old and this goes for about 200 to 300 US dollars now um, and the distillers reserve goes to about 120 to 150 US dollars now the distillers reserve is a no age statement and the um, Suntory Yamazaki 12 is an age statement um, the 10 was discontinued so I presume that the distillers reserve is there to replace the 10 now because, dis because they discontinued the 10 I would also logically deduct that um, the distillers reserve will be way way sub 10 they reduced it so they can sell it quicker faster and make more money so the 12 is a minimum 12 year old as per usual um, because obviously otherwise that would be extremely bad for them to bottle something that isn't 12 years old and say it is i'm looking at the color both of them have very similar coloring another thing as well is that on this bottle it doesn't say that whether it's chill filtered or colored um, which would indicate to me that both of these whiskies will be colored and chill filtered. Um, they'll be interesting to see what, what they taste like. Um, Suntory, Yamazaki say that their water is from the ground, goes through the mountain and it's about 4,000 years old before the water comes out. And so that's really novelty, a great story. Um, and this, this, this is more of a, what is it like compared and is it worth the hype? So let's see how we go. Let's get nosing first with the Distillers Reserve. The nose is pleasant. Oh, sorry, both of them are 43%, by the way. The nose is pleasant. There's a little bit of an alcohol zinc to it, but it's very pleasant. I would presume that it is actually quite a heavy bourbon cask. Maybe a little bit of a sherry blend. Strong vanillin, strong bourbon influence. Relatively lightly oaked. I'm getting a little bit of liquefied raisins in there. And I'm getting a floral note to it as well. I'm getting a fresh green jasmine tea. I'm getting overripe fruits. And I'm getting a strange perfume I can't put my finger on. And when I've had these before, I would put that perfume down to the Mizunara influence. Um, these, these bottlings have a Mizunara influence. I don't know how much, but there is a Mizunara influence. So if you don't know what a Mizunara is, it is a Japanese oak native to Japan. And they're actually very strict when it comes to exporting Mizunara. So Mizunara is not something that you find anywhere else. So if you have anything Mizunara finished, it's usually Pinarica or Diageo that owns that distillery that can obtain that Mizunara for finishing or maturing. Mizunara has a very incense-like incense, incense -like, um, finish to it. You do get a bit of... Um, a new make spirit when you really knows it but I must say the blending of this distillers reserve is very skillfully done because I would say it would be younger than 10 because otherwise I just say 10 years old I would say it'll be between six to seven on average five to seven on average but yet the blending is exceptional because you don't get that new make spirit it's well hidden in there and the nose is very pleasant. A very nice perfume on the nose. There's a slight herbal note, herbal note to the nose, but can't put my finger on it. It's very, very mellow. 
very perfumed, slightly floral, fruity, with a bourbon cask influence. I don't believe there's much sherry in there at all. I don't believe there's much sherry in there at all. Let's nose the Yamazaki 12. The Yamazaki 12 is definitely deeper in tannin. Despite the color, I also think it is a bourbon cask predominantly, if not exclusively. Strong vanilla and slightly stronger. There is a distinct difference on the nose with the two. Distinctly different. You can definitely tell this has matured a lot more. I'm getting notes of caramel, burnt caramel, burnt sugar. The floral bouquet has become more caramelized. A hint of citrus and the incense smell has definitely become more prominent. But relatively clean smelling whiskey, no oiliness, faint hint of smoke, very faint hint of smoke. But it smells very nice. I must say it smells very nice. But the two the two noses are distinctly different between the two. Distinctly different. You can definitely tell this is a much more mature whiskey than this one here. Um, I would even say now that I'm almost certain that Distillers Reserve will be five to six years old versus a 12. It's just so much more developed, the 12. On the nose, it's just much more involved with the wood, much more involved with the tannins. Now, if they did use, I don't believe they use virgin Mizunaro with this, um, because otherwise you wouldn't get that bourbon influence, but I would be interested to know, I mean, there's nothing online about it, if, what, what barrels they use. I would say they probably did have some that's virgin Mizunara, and they did have bourbon barrels. Now, Suntory, Beam Suntory, they have access to endless amounts of bourbon barrels. So I would say that they've put Mizunara casks and bourbon and blended the single malts together to make sure that they get that unique Japanese profile. But correct me if I'm wrong, there is a strange perfume to it, but I would almost say that it is heavily bourbon barrel. But the smell is not thick, it's not viscous. So let's see what the mouthfeel and taste is like. Let's start with the Distillers Reserve. Forty-three percent, very mild whiskey, floral, slightly fruity, slight earthiness to it, vanilla, um, sweet coconut. The problem that I have with this whiskey here is that it's very clean. It's too clean. The finish disappears it's not a long finish the finish is longer than anticipated from the previous japanese whiskey i reviewed but the finish is very unsophisticated and short there's a bitterness in the end of the palate which is a distinctly unmistakable new make which means that it is definitely a young whiskey um the spirit has not been too involved in the aging process yet it definitely has that new make bitterness right in the end I can taste that, you can't mistake it. The taste is very clean. It almost, I'm almost certain this is most definitely 99.99%, I'm 100% certain it's chill filtered. It's way too clean, there's no resin, there's no oil, there's no, there's not much texture. Easy drinking though. So if you like a whiskey to be smooth, easy, just super duper, you know, you know, yeah, you can just sip it, no, not much thinking going on. Actually, I would go with this. Um, I mean, this is not a bad whiskey for that. The price point, let's get into that later. Let's try the Yamazaki 12. Chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. The Yamazaki 12 is much more complex. I'm starting to get some spices in there. I'm getting raisins, cinnamon, nutmeg, which is strange because I don't think it's a sherry cask, but I'm definitely getting some fruit in there buttery 
slightly oilier but not really it's still very clean tasting as a general proposition I definitely think it is also chill filtered I'm almost certain of it also because uh, the Asian market likes their whiskey to never go cloudy in ice or cocktails and so I'm also certain of that but I can taste that difference of just it's too clean it's quite two dimensional tasting so you imagine you know you have a hundred percent of flavor from start to finish a long finish right a super long finish it kind of stops at about 60 percent maybe 65 percent um it just stops the flavor ends and all you can taste is that alcohol for a 12 year old i can still taste the alcohol quite a bit that could be because maybe where they actually have it is quite a cool weather um but overall it's not a bad whiskey I am getting that strange perfume and I am betting it is a Mizunara influence but I'm not sure because there's not much information but there is a slight strange perfume to it a slight bitterness to it but you can still taste that new make right in the back end yeah uh, yeah um, but not a bad whiskey so comparing the two I would definitely say that value for money if you're gonna pick one or the other Look, the Yamazaki Distillery Reserve is not bad. Blended skillfully, um, and it definitely ticks the box. The finish is very poor. Very poor finish. There's not much complexity. Doesn't really matter. It's not thought provoking at all. There is absolutely no challenge to this whiskey. The 12, definitely chalk and cheese. If money wasn't an object, I would say the 12 out of this two every time. However, big however. When you look at the value you're paying for this, to be completely frank with you, I would probably rather spend less on a Johnny Walker Gold um, than the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. So a Yamaz uh, you can get a Johnny Walker Gold, duty free special, one litre, you know, two two bottles for ch cheapest chips, right? For for cheapest shit. So really, um, I would rather buy that than the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. The more I taste Japanese whiskies, the more I realize Japanese whiskies to me is really a bit of a designer brand in the whiskey world. Um, the brand has exceeded, has exceeded its actual delivery of flavor and substance. And if you're looking at the price you pay for a Yamazaki 12, buy it, invest in it, sit on it, and sell it later because you're just not going to get the joy, in my opinion, of, of, of the value of it. If it was $120, $130, or let's say $150 US dollars for this, I would even say, you know what, it could be worth it. But it, even then, it's pushing it. You see, I think $100 US max for this quality is what I would cap this. It's chill filtered, it's colored, it's not very sophisticated, it lacks complexity and depth, it's relatively two dimensional, it ends very quickly on the palate. It just it just doesn't have much going for it um, and the price point that you're buying it's all the hype um, it's worth trying but I'd say go to a bar go to a bar and try it or maybe as a group of friends all of you pitch in together and maybe take a hundred mils each or 50 mils each just so you can experience it but I don't think it's worth the bottle um, at all I don't think it's worth the bottle at all so look thank you very much for joining me today let me know what you think I know that I'm gonna step on a lot of toes here because the Yamazaki um, range I mean, I've seen people go crazy for them. It's like the freaking Hunger Games when it comes to them. You know, they, they, they fight for you know, the bottles when they see it available. I wouldn't fight for these bottles. I'd be happy to let them go because I think that, yeah, there's just not much substance to them um, for the price you pay especially, which is a shame, which is a shame because there's a lot of potential on them, um, with them. It's just that they chill full to them um, and I can taste that in the finish. Um, this Yamazaki Distillers Reserve, even though it's blended fantastically to, to hide the new make, you can definitely still taste the new make, in my opinion, anyway. And, um, you know, if you try a lot of older whiskies and more mature whiskies, or whiskies that are more involved in the barrel already, then you will definitely notice that the Yamazaki is um, very shallow in comparison in terms of flavor profile. Um, I think that if they made it 46 or 48%, I think my tone would be much different, even though it's chill filtered, my, my tone would be much different. 43, in my opinion, is taking the piss. Thank you, thank you very much for joining me today, and I want to thank uh, Sammy um, for lending me these two bottles and getting me to try them. Um, cheers, until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink. 
And um, don't forget to hit the shit out of the bell and hit the crap out of the subscribe. Thank you.